Roger Waters, the former frontman and mastermind behind many of Pink Floyd's most iconic hits, has been sidelined from the band for decades. This year, he is releasing The Dark Side of the Moon Redux, a re-recording of one of the most cherished albums in rock history, to celebrate the 50th anniversary of its release. Waters wants to take the chance to communicate the original message of the album with the wisdom of an 80-year-old. When he made those comments, he admitted that he anticipated there being some copyright issues with the album's release. But why is Waters so determined to reinterpret a classic album at the risk of tainting his legacy? Welcome to Behind the Music. In this video, we dive into the history of Pink Floyd, the feuds about ownership, and why some believe that Roger Waters' latest release is hurting the legendary image of the band. It is the 50th anniversary of the release of the original record. The feud between Roger Waters and his ex-bandmates is largely with David Gilmour. Gilmour joined Pink Floyd after the original frontman and lead singer Sid Barrett left the band. Barrett had suffered from a mental breakdown and retreated from the public eye. In his place was Roger Waters, the bassist and co-lead singer who proved to have grand artistic visions. The Waters era was the most successful and highly regarded in the band's history. He was the driving creative behind The Dark Side of the Moon, Wish You Were Here, Animals, and The Wall. But by the mid-1980s, Waters and Gilmore were fighting more than ever. An album titled The Final Cut was released in 1983 and was described as by Roger Waters and performed by Pink Floyd. Gilmore had requested more time to come up with music, but Waters had gone ahead with the production anywhere, omitting Gilmore from the production credits. This seemed to be the final straw. Two years after the album's release, Waters left the band, claiming that he had been practically forced out. However, it was only the beginning of the end. Waters launched a legal challenge against Pink Floyd for his former band to stop using the group's name, which he argued had become virtually synonymous with his songwriting and creativity. This battle dragged on for years until Waters and Gilmore finally reached an agreement. Over the years, Waters' feelings about his actions during this period have changed. He has admitted that he shouldn't have tried to impose his feeling about the work onto others. Meanwhile, his feud with Gilmore has only intensified. The full Pink Floyd lineup reunited only once in 2005 for the Live 8 concert in Hyde Park. The following year, Waters began a two-year The Dark Side of the Moon live concert tour where he performed Pink Floyd material, solo music, and then the album in full. The only former Pink Floyd member to appear on the tour was Nick Mason, who has been the only continuous member since the band's founding. The Dark Side of the Moon was by far Pink Floyd's most successful album and one that in many ways came to define the band. To date, it has sold over 45 million copies worldwide, and it catapulted the members to extraordinary wealth. Roger Waters is now worth over $310 million, while David Gilmour's is an estimated $180 million. Both for its financial, musical, and cultural significance, The Dark Side of the Moon is considered the centerpiece of Pink Floyd's creative output and one of the greatest albums of all time. The lyrics center around the scrutiny and pressure of being in a high-profile band as founder and former member Sid Barrett's health struggles exemplified. The Dark Side of the Moon is a commentary on society, what it means to live a fulfilled life, and forces like money that threaten to consume us. These are the themes that were revisited by the band and Roger Waters repeatedly. Musically, the album's experimental, airy atmosphere of vocals and guitar sounds combined with a classic rock grounding. The range from the groovy rock of time to the slow-paced, near-transcendental breathe and the gospel singing of Great Gig in the Sky is a remarkable achievement for a single album. It marked a high point for rock music's broad appeal during the 1970s and a masterpiece of progressive and psychedelic rock. With the Redux release, Roger Waters has stripped back many of these elements to what he believes is more reflective of the concept that gave birth to the album. It also includes sections of spoken word from Waters, which will give a greater insight into the meaning behind the music. It's part of his campaign to reclaim ownership of the artistic direction of the band. He told the newspaper earlier this year, I wrote The Dark Side of the Moon. Let's get rid of this we crap. It's my project and I wrote it. Waters, never one to bite his tongue, also aimed his former bandmates, saying that while they were there in the recording, none of them knew how to write lyrics like he does. Waters argued that continuing to use the name Pink Floyd without him was akin to Paul McCartney and Ringo Starr using the name The Beatles without John Lennon. Nick Mason has been supportive of The Dark Side of the Moon Redux. However, many worried that it could be tarnishing the legacy of the original. More than the reinterpretation, it's Roger Waters himself 
who is viewed as problematic. One of the issues is that Roger Waters has struggled to stay out of the headlines recently and for all the wrong reasons. Waters has been politically active his entire career. There are heavy themes of politics, justice, reflection, and isolation in much of his music. The concept for Pink Floyd's Animals was inspired by George Orwell's satirical story Animal Farm about authoritarianism. Later, The Wall deals with anti-war and anti-fascist subjects, where the protagonist devolves into the delusional state of a dictator. But Waters' radical politics have landed him in controversy after controversy. Israeli media have called him anti-Semitic for his use of an inflatable pig in his shows, brandishing the Star of David on one side. A German court in Frankfurt sought to have him banned from playing in the city, calling his shows insensitive and disrespectful to victims of the Holocaust. The Russian invasion of Ukraine has been a hotbed issue for Waters too. While most of the Western world universally condemned Russia's actions, Waters had a different stance, arguing that the United States and NATO in particular had provoked the invasion and was supporting Ukraine to continue rather than resolve the conflict. He called Joe Biden a war criminal for this and has felt the reaction of the public. In Poland, shows for his This Is Not A Drill concert tour were canceled. Media in the country had criticized his presence in the country and a council was set to vote on naming him a persona non grata for his views. But no one has been more ruthless than his former associates. Polly Sampson, the wife of David Gilmore, who worked with Pink Floyd as a lyricist after Waters left the band, called him an anti-Semitic and a Putin apologist, adding that he was a lying, thieving, lip-syncing, misogynistic megalomaniac. David Gilmore agreed with his wife, tweeting that every word is demonstrably true. The feud between the two has only intensified over the decades, moving from creative differences to political ones. Last year, Variety magazine reported that Pink Floyd had been looking to sell their music catalog for upwards of $500 million to either a major music label or an investor. Other music legends like Bob Dylan and Bruce Springsteen have sold their catalogs for a similar figure, and Pink Floyd is arguably the most desirable in the industry. According to that report, though, the recent comments of Waters have stunted negotiations with investors worried that his controversies had a serious impact on the brand value of Pink Floyd. Specifically, in an interview he did with Rolling Stone, he argued that the Jewish population in the Western world should be held accountable for the actions of the Israeli state because they pay for everything. Prospective investors may have been spooked about the influence on the marketability of Pink Floyd, despite not having produced music under that name for almost 40 years. Waters has long been frozen out of using Pink Floyd's platform to promote his own music. While he says that it was a mistake to take the matter to court and demand the band be dissolved, he might finally be getting his wish. With his controversial political statements, he's decreasing the marketability of Pink Floyd, either intentionally or not. That's it for this video. Dark Side of the Moon Redux is set to be released 6th of October. So once out, let us know in the comment section what you think. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel for more in-depth videos that go behind the music. We'll talk to you again in the next one.